All right, welcome to this week's press conference after a 42-17 Dakota Days win over Northern Iowa last week. Um, the Coyotes head to Eastern Ohio this week to take on Youngstown State. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with opening comments from Coach Nielsen and then open up uh, for comments after that. Yeah, really a good win uh, for a football team. Northern Iowa is a good team. Um, you know, they've played a really difficult schedule, so their record doesn't necessarily represent how – uh, how good they are. I was really pleased of the way our team responded. They they, they forced us to respond um, with uh, uh, scoring a touchdown on that opening drive. Um, offensively responded to that, um, and then you know we're able to to build to build a, a first half lead, and then uh, defense responded with a big stop there right uh, before uh, half that I think was a a big momentum play in the game and was really pleased with the way that we responded in the second half. I uh, thought we really did a great job of controlling the football game, um, uh, scoring on our opening drive. I think we had the ball for 20, 21, 22 minutes in the second half. Um, defense did a, did a great job of of getting them off the field. And and so uh, the way you want to close a game out uh, when, when you have that kind of a lead at halftime. Awesome. And with that, Alex, go ahead. Morning, Coach. Morning. Yeah, so another huge win for you guys at home, Five over 500 yards of offense. What have you seen as the season's gone on that has just continued to improve on that offense? Uh, well, I think it's a combination of things. I think our offensive staff's doing a good job putting a plan together every week. Uh uh, we've been finding ways to to take advantage of defenses with uh, um, you know with big plays, but at the same time, probably the the most important thing is um, that uh, we've uh, uh, been able to uh, keep a, a sound and and uh, a consistent running game going uh, against. Uh, what was this week a very good rush defense in Northern Iowa, and so when you do that, it it helps you be uh, be balanced. Uh, we're continuing to play uh, really good defense. Um, I know you know they obviously uh, uh, we gave a couple of big plays, which is uncharacteristic uh, on Saturday that we'd like to have back. But overall, uh, three of ten on third downs, um, holding them to. Uh, way below their average rushing the football um, is uh, is a winning formula defensively. Yeah, one of the top defenses in the FCS. Looking forward to Youngstown State. They have a dual threat quarterback. How are you guys going to plan to kind of contain his legs? Uh, well, you got to you got a good do a good job of of not letting him out of the pocket um, when uh, when he's back passing, and they do have some design quarterback run that. Uh, you have to account for as well. Um, but I think that's that's the big thing is just, you know, making sure that uh, from, a, uh, you know, from a standpoint of uh, he creates offense uh, by escaping the pocket, doing some things to extend plays. You got to be consistent with how you're you're putting pressure on him in passing situations and make sure that you're accounting for him as a runner. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Mm hmm. Jay, go ahead. You're muted, Jay. Sorry, guys. Rookie mistake. It's not my first time, I promise. <laughs> You've talked a lot, Coach, about, um, you know, the, the offense, just how things are coming together. And, and we've seen that progress bear out, you know, with the results here uh, over the last few weeks. But I've been particularly interested here of late um, in the success in the first half alone, um, did some digging, scored on 13 of your last 17 first half possessions. 12 of those are touchdowns. Outscored the opponents in the first half, 87 to 17 over the last three games. Um, are you hitting a level there now where you feel like uh, you're about, you know, hitting close to peak level with what you guys are, are doing on that side, especially starting games and putting teams in holes as quickly as you are? That's a great, great way to play football is to play from in front and 
you know, offensively, I think, uh, again, you know, I'm going to give a lot of credit to our staff there. Uh, they, they do a good job every week putting together a plan. Um, our kids have gone out and, and executed that plan. Uh, Aiden is playing at a high level. I think uh, that first half um, uh, Saturday, you know, might have been his best half of football. He was the ball, he was getting the ball distributed, putting it on the money, uh, making the checks in the run game that we needed him to make, um, really efficiently uh, running uh, our uh, our offense. And and so uh, I think the, the thing that has helped us offensively, and I go back to this, is we've been really intentional about finding ways to to um, get the ball to our some of our perimeter players that uh, have allowed us to to pick up a few more chunk plays uh, in games and and as a result it's it's opened up some opportunities it's made it a little bit harder for teams to 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 load the box against the run game um, because we're creating some opportunities um, on the perimeter and I, I think Saturday was an example of that you know we made made some big plays uh, on the perimeter early on in the passing game. Um, and uh, Aiden did a good job of keeping drives alive on, on third down in situations where we needed him to make an off-schedule throw. That was the other piece that stood out. Like the last two games, you look at Murray and, and you and I, you've had one three and out total in those two games. So just you, you talk about ball control. One way to do that is to, to keep the ball, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah, and we want to we want to be a ball control offense, um, you know, and, and we talk about moving the ball with consistency, um, and that's ac execution. Uh, the thing that we've done a good job of, I think, particularly the last two weeks, is we've 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 done, you know, we've been pretty good on first and second down, so we're we're not looking at a lot of third and off schedule uh, situations and. Uh, even uh, this last week, uh, you know, on Saturday, we picked up a penalty, I think, on the first drive. Uh, we had first and 20. We did a good job of getting that back into a manageable uh, third down situation that uh, allowed us to to convert. And um, so, um, you know, it's one of the keys. You know, you, you, you end up in a lot of third and long situations. You're probably going to punt a fair amount if you can – you know, stay in that third and, and medium to third and short. You got a pretty good chance to keep your drive alive. And, and we've been executing on those third down situations. On the defensive side, are, are you surprised at all at how quickly that group has come together? Um, you know, obviously coming into the year, you lose Bogey, you lose Phyllis. And, you know, it's it's fair to have questions. I, obviously, you had a, a lot up front and a lot on the backside to, to help those guys in the middle come up to speed as quickly as possible. But it feels like that group is is one that's pulling all in the same direction, and really they have been pretty much the whole way through to this point. Yeah, you, you know, uh, I, I won't. I've been I've been pleased. I'm not going to say I've, I've been surprised. Um, you know, you you look at that. You know, our defense. We really got four starters back up front. If you count Mike Keese as a starter, I mean, he played a lot last year, and in certain packages was our starter, and so. With Holden and Newsom and and Gaze and and Mike Heese, you know we got the full gamut of guys up front there. Um, in the secondary, um, you know the only starter we lost was Miles Harden, and uh, we got three of those guys back now that Shahid's back in the rotation. Um, the linebacker core, um, you know Gary Bryant, we had a lot of confidence in uh, as a guy that had been in our system. Um, we really felt that he was going to be capable of of playing at a high level and he has, uh, you know, both from a play standpoint and a leadership standpoint, which that Mike linebacker uh, needs to be able to do. And so, you know, that group is continuing to get better. Um, you know, they, uh, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's still growth there um, as that younger linebacker core gets more and more experience, but um, uh, they, uh, um, uh, you know, they're, they they leaned on the experience up front and the experience in the back end early. And by now, at this point in time during the season, everybody's everybody's seasoned because you've got you've got six games under your belt. Um, last one for me is just Youngstown. It's a it's a tough trip. You guys know that all too well. And USC's never won there. You've won there. 
uh, as a coach, but, but USD has not. So how do we get that um, monkey off the back uh, and this time where it seems like, you know, matchup wise, this is as favorable of a situation as you guys have had make in making this trip. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I think the key thing is understanding that anytime you play on the road, you got, you better take your best football with you um, in this league. It's just, you know, everybody's, uh, everybody's talented enough. Everybody's uh, uh, physical enough. Um, you know, we've, we've got a, we've played really well at home. Uh, we played well two weeks ago on the road at Murray state. You know, we've got to, we've got to make sure that we're well prepared in all three phases of the game and we got to go out and execute, uh, at a high level. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and when, when you're on the road, uh, uh, in our league, uh, that's the only way that you can win football games. And so that's, that's our plan this week, you know, to, to keep working, take some of those areas uh, as we have so far this year where we got to get better and get better at those areas and take our best football uh, of the the year to, to Youngstown on Saturday. Thanks, Coach. Wofford, go ahead. Morning, Coach. How are you? Good, thanks. You mentioned how the offense is really operating at a high level right now, something that I don't think people maybe realize is that you're spreading the ball around a lot. You had nine different receivers touch the ball on Saturday. I think six different guys ran the ball. How advantageous is that for your offense that anybody who has the ball can make a big play at any time? Well, we've got, you know, I've got some guys that are uh – you know, truly uh, playmakers to use a cliche and, and uh, um, you know, we've, we've done a good job of trying to find some different ways to involve those guys, whether it's Keandre and, um, you know, certainly Carter Bell, you know, this week we got involved a little bit more um, in catches, a couple of, of rushes himself. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it was funny two weeks ago, you know, Karan Adams had a big day where he didn't even catch a pass on, on Saturday, but it was good to see some of those other guys, some of our bigger receivers uh, make some critical plays. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that our staff's done a good job of is kind of looking at the strengths of our of our personnel finding uh, different ways that we can involve them in the offense that creates uh, stress on the defense. And um, we got to keep doing that, you know, and, and uh, um, we even, you know, we have been able to, to get Nevin into the game uh, here a little bit the last two weeks. And uh, he continues to make plays when he has the opportunity to be in there and, Every play he gets um, helps uh, helps him build confidence in being able to execute uh, uh, our our system offensively. Something that we saw a lot of on Saturday was the introduction of a lot more creativity in terms of play calling. And you didn't say trick plays per se, but niche plays um, after the game. Just. How how can that give you guys even more chunk plays when you're throwing different looks at the defense that they don't really know what could happen on any given play? Yeah, I think it all starts uh, again. Um, you know, a lot of those plays are all built off the fact that you're running the football. And when you're running the football with effectiveness, you know, there are different play action pass opportunities uh, that uh, that you can create, reverse opportunities that you can create. Um, and, uh, you know, we've tried to build some of those things into, uh, our, our, uh, plan, uh, every week that we think, uh, have a chance to be effective. Um, what I've been pleased with is a way that our guys have gone out and executed those things. Cause, you know, honestly, you know, you get a couple of days of practice every week, you, you put in a few, of those kinds of new wrinkles and then you got to go out and 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 execute them on saturday and and our guys have um you know we haven't been perfect by any sense of imagination but we we've been able to execute some of those things at a high enough level that we've been able to be successful you mentioned gary bryan a lot after after the game on saturday and today again just We've we've seen his play on the field, but you mentioned his leadership and his importance there. How do you see him handle himself day to day that makes him that great leader for that defense? 
well, he's a guy that comes to work every day, you know, and, and, um, uh, um, with focus and he's, um, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a guy we challenged during the off season, knowing that we were going to need somebody in that linebacker uh, room to, to take uh, on a leadership role when you lose two guys like Brock Mogensen and Stephen Hillis that have been just uh, stalwart uh, leaders in your program. And, and, uh, and Gary accepted that challenge. Now he's different, you know, um, uh, you know, he, 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 he leads by example, um, by doing things the right way, by, uh, he's got a, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a good football learner. Um, and, uh, so takes great pride in, in his ability to execute stuff. And, and that's exactly what we need out of that position. Thanks coach. Thanks. Or go ahead. Coach, uh, <clears throat> I've got to ask with the two of those touchdowns in particular with Galbraith and Tice, are they, uh, considering trying out for the track team with the with the one's hurdle skill and the the leaping skill there <laughs> yeah jj showed some athleticism there uh, you know he's a pretty unique athlete for a tight end and and uh um uh, thought it was funny that that happened right in front of the student section so a good way to get them involved in the game and but you know they're they're uh, uh guys that that are very talented athletes and you saw some of that on Saturday more serious note there just how much of a aside from the, the talent they have and, and certainly one or both of them might get a shot next year to compete on Sundays how much of an emotional lift I mean you, you mentioned JJ's being right in front of the student section not only for your crowd but even for the for the rest of your team with some of the plays they make i mean it seems like tight ends anymore across all levels of football are kind of doing these things but w with some of the things they do the plays they make even moments like that how much of an emotional lift do they give guys even in a game and in in, with moments with plays like that or even just little things that we maybe even don't see yeah, I think big plays like that are always uh, momentum plays, you know, whether it's a, a great run, or big block or great tackle or, you know, Gary Bryant's interception and, you know, right before half there, uh, huge momentum plays and and uh, uh, our guys feed off that uh, just like, you know, the crowd feeds off that uh, from, uh, uh, you know, from an emotional standpoint. And the last thing, obviously, you'll be after this Youngstown game. Certainly, you'll be entering into one of the more one of the tougher stretches, one of the more maybe defining stretches of your season as you start to play the other Dakota schools. Uh, maybe with past groups, maybe with other teams, you could get worried about a trap game. I'm guessing with this group and the experience that they have. You, it's not something you really worry about this group getting caught looking ahead or uh, they've been, it seems like with, and especially with the way they've been improving week after week, uh, is this a group that you, you feel pretty confident they, they, they're firmly rooted in uh, just kind of going, you know, the old kind of the cliche of going one and zero each week. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of maturity on this football team um, and guys that understand, Hey, you know, They've not won at Youngstown State. They know how hard and how good we're going to have to play to win out there. And and uh, they also understand in this league, man, you got to take one. You truly do have to take one game at a time. You got to be your best every week. Um, and uh, and and so uh, that's going to be the focus for for Saturday. Um, and uh, see if we can uh, find a way to get another win on the road in the valley. Thank you much. Yep. And if that's everybody, that's all I had on my list. Last call for questions. All right. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone.